In this video, we will cover each underscore and lambda expression notation. A lambda function is a discrete string of code that creates what's called an anonymous function that can be used to perform a custom calculation. To define a lambda function, we put one or more variables within parentheses, followed by the lambda operator, or hash rocket, and then use those variables in a mathematical formula. To create the lambda operator, we use both the equal symbol and the greater than symbol. In M language, to evaluate the lambda function, we put parentheses around the entire function expression, and then another set of parentheses to define the values for the variables. In this example, we used the variable x to define the custom formula, x plus 1, and then evaluate the lambda function with x equal to 1 to return the number 2. If we don't include the values for the variables in the formula, then it will trigger Power Query to recognize the expression as a function instead of a final value, and will prompt you to enter in the values for the variables. In this example, lambda expression notation was used to define the variable x and the mathematical formula as x squared. This created a custom function, and Power Query prompted us to enter a value for x. And when we entered in the number 2, it returned the number 4 as the result. Let's look at another example using Power Query. We'll type equals the letter x in parentheses, the lambda operator equals and greater than, and then put an x plus x for fun. And now we need to close this expression within an external set of parentheses. And then we'll use the number 1 in another set of parentheses to get the number 2. Then let's change this to the number 2 to return the number 4. And then let's remove the external parentheses to show how it turns into a function. And then we'll use the number 5 to return the number 10. Here is an example of a lambda function with two variables, where we define both variables x and y in the parentheses, and then create the mathematical formula x squared plus y cubed. Then if we evaluate this formula using the numbers 3 and 2 for x and y respectively, we get the number 17. If only one variable is needed in a custom function, then we can replace the lambda notation with the each underscore notation. When doing that, the keyword each takes the place of the x and the lambda operator, and the underscore takes the place of the variable x in the mathematical formula. In this example, we used each underscore plus one to evaluate the function in the place of x plus one. Here is another example where instead of having a formula with x plus x, we use underscore plus underscore. To facilitate calculations, each underscore can be used in certain formulas. However, the formula context automatically defines what the underscore variable represents, and you cannot change this. These five M language formulas are the ones most commonly used with the each underscore notation. When using the table dot at column formula, the underscore represents each existing row formatted as a record in the new column. When using the table dot group formula, the underscore represents each group formatted as a table. When using the table transform columns formula, the underscore represents each cell value in the specified columns. When using the table got pivot formula, the underscore presents each pivoted column formatted as a list. And finally, when using the table dot transform rows formula, the underscore represents each row formatted as a record. We'll now look at each of these formulas in more detail. To create the table dot add column function, we'll use the user interface and click on Add Column and Custom Column, and then just add a underscore by itself to demonstrate how this adds a record for every row of the table. For the table.group function, we'll right-click over the column and select Group By. And we see that this creates a table 
for each grouped row. An example of the table.transform columns function is shown here, but we will not do a live demonstration. For the table.pivot function, we will select pivot column from the user interface. And then for this one, I will take off the list.sum and just put each underscore to demonstrate how that creates a list for each of the pivoted columns. For table.transform rows, we'll have to type it in directly as it's not available in the user interface. So we'll type table.transform rows and select T1 as a table. And this converts each row into a standalone record. When using some functions that are compatible with the each operator, there are some cases where the underscore is not needed, especially when using the square brackets filled access operator. The most common function where this will be evident is the table.addCone function. And in this example, we see how we can include the underscore, but if we don't, it still achieves the same result. However, even though lambda notation is equivalent to each underscore in almost every case, if we use a lambda function instead of each underscore, then the x or other variable is required to be included. This will be demonstrated in the following example. First, we'll start by adding a new column and only putting the underscore as the formula to create the record for every row. Then we'll use square brackets to access the field named column one, which returns only the value from column one. Now we'll remove the underscore, and it is the same result. Next, we'll replace the each underscore with the lambda notation, where we'll put x, the lambda operator, and an x in front of the field access operator, and once again, it achieves the same result. But if we remove the x, then we get an error. We'll now discuss direct argument notation. If we use a function that only takes one argument, and the needed argument is a record, list, or table, then using each underscore and even the parentheses is not needed if the function is used in the applicable context. The table shown here gives examples of four functions, their context, and then one example of the function that can be used with direct argument notation. For example, the context for the table.at column function is a record, and we can use the record.fieldNames function in direct argument notation. And in a similar way, we can use the table.group function on the table groups with the table.transpose function the table.transform columns on cell values with the text.trim function, and the table.pivot function with the context of lists with the list.sum function. We'll now look at two examples of modifying the same function using each underscore and direct argument notation. Turning with the previous example, we'll restore the each underscore to return the records. And then we'll replace that with the record.fieldValues function. And this returns a list of the values from each record. We can also put the each and underscore as an argument in this function, which still returns the list. But if you pay attention to the data type in the column header, it will go from being an unknown data type to the list data type. So that is one advantage of using direct argument notation, that it maintains the correct data types. In this next example, we'll use the table.group function to create group tables.
And then we'll remove the tight table argument so we can work directly with the each underscore. Next, we'll use the each underscore as arguments in the table.transpose function. And we can see that this works just fine to transpose each table. Here, Whale we'll replaced each underscore with the lambda notation and show that it also works. Next, we'll remove everything except for the table.transpose, including the parentheses, and we'll show that the data type changed to table, which is what this data is, and the table.transpose function worked correctly. This concludes the training on each underscore and lambda notation. Next up, we'll review if-then-else and try otherwise expressions.